Tesla had envisioned receiving stations which would look just like the Wardenclyffe Tower at different nodal points around the Earth. So he would jump energy by means of wireless from station to station. He even thought that he could eventually use the same system to jump power to different planets. This isn't just a story about a forgotten invention. It's a mystery buried beneath rusted steel, scattered bricks, and a dream that refused to die. We're standing on the remains of something bold, Nikola Tesla's lost laboratory. A place where the impossible was supposed to happen. No wires, no plugs, just pure energy, dancing through the air, lighting up the world. Tesla believed he could turn the Earth itself into a battery. And while his tower never fulfilled that promise, the vision never vanished. Today, engineers are chasing the same dream. But can anyone finish what Tesla started? Inside Wardenclyffe Lab, tucked away on Long Island, lies what remains of Wardenclyffe, Tesla's final laboratory. It doesn't look like much now. Weather-worn, half-buried, and silent. But over a century ago, this was the epicenter of one of the boldest scientific experiments ever attempted. Here, Tesla imagined more than a simple lab. He saw a gateway, a launch point for a global network of power stations that could electrify the planet without a single cable. The lab's centerpiece was a towering structure that once reached nearly 57 meters into the sky. It stood like a lightning rod to the heavens. Not just a tower, but a transmitter of power and information. A machine designed to broadcast energy through the earth and air, reaching ships, cities, and even airplanes. Tesla didn't just want to power homes, he wanted to change how humanity connected, communicated, and lived. And Wardenclyffe was supposed to prove it could be done. Walking through the grounds today, it's hard not to feel like you're wandering an archaeological site. Crumbling walls, empty foundations. But behind it all, beneath the silence, there's still the echo of an idea so powerful that it continues to shape research more than 100 years later. Tesla's legacy and the coil. Nikola Tesla wasn't just another inventor. He was a force of nature in human form. The list of his contributions reads like a blueprint for the modern world. Induction motors, the world's first hydroelectric power plant, and the alternating current system that powers our lives today. He even laid the groundwork for radio communication, holding patents that still influence the technology. But nestled among these monumental achievements is something far stranger the Tesla coil. It wasn't meant to power cities. It was never designed to be practical, but it was mesmerizing. When activated, it could send crackling arcs of electricity into the air and make nearby bulbs glow without being plugged in. To Tesla, this wasn't just a parlor trick. It was proof, proof that power could be transferred without wires. He saw the coil as a small version of a much larger dream a model for how energy could move invisibly, freely, through space. Even if he didn't fully understand all the physics behind it, Tesla believed in what he saw. And what he saw was enough to spark something bigger, a vision of a planet pulsing with untethered energy, a world where wires became obsolete, how wireless power works. To understand Tesla's ambition, you have to understand the science, or at least, the glimpse of it he saw. At the heart of wireless power is a simple idea. Electricity can travel through magnetic and electric fields. The Tesla coil was an early attempt to make that happen. It took in high current electricity and stepped it up to high voltage. That voltage created a powerful, rapidly changing magnetic field, which in turn induced an electric field in nearby objects. That's why a fluorescent bulb lights up when you hold it close. The gas inside the bulb gets excited by the electric field. The bulb glows. And you never touched a wire. It looks like magic. But there's a catch. Distance. The farther you move from the power source, the weaker the field becomes. And not just a little weaker. The drop-off is exponential. Every time you double the distance, the power drops off by a factor of six. That's not just inconvenient, it's a fundamental law of physics. So while a Tesla coil could light a room full of bulbs, it could also zap you with a dangerous surge of current. It wasn't practical, 
and it wasn't scalable. But it showed what was possible. Tesla didn't know the exact limits, but what he witnessed gave him confidence. It told him there might be a way to scale this up, to send power not just across a room, but across cities, oceans, maybe the entire planet. The tower that never took off. In 1901, fueled by ambition and a modest pool of investor money, Tesla began construction on the Wardenclyffe Tower. Rising nearly 57 meters high, this skeletal behemoth was the centerpiece of his plan to electrify the globe without wires. The octagonal base still exists today, silent and overgrown, but once it was meant to be the control hub for a technological revolution. The tower was more than just a power transmitter. Tesla believed it could send not only electricity through the earth and sky, but also data, text, images, and maybe even voice. He envisioned a world where towers like this dotted the continents, connected not by wires, but by the very fabric of the Earth's electromagnetic field. Power would flow invisibly from one tower to another, leapfrogging oceans, illuminating entire cities, and charging vehicles mid-journey. Boats at sea, airships in flight, homes in the countryside, all of them lit and powered by this invisible force. No plugs, no power plants, just energy, beamed like thought across the globe. He had even drawn up blueprints for follow-up towers, one in Newfoundland, another in Scotland, each meant to expand the network. Wardenclyffe wasn't just a lab experiment. It was Tesla's moonshot, a prototype for a new way of life. But he would never see it complete. Funding dried up, the science didn't convince the investors, and the world wasn't ready to trust in a technology they couldn't see or understand. The tower was left standing, majestic and useless, a dream on hold. Why Tesla's vision failed. Tesla was a genius, no doubt, but even geniuses can be wrong. In the case of Wardenclyffe, he built on a foundation of flawed assumptions. His grand vision hinged on one critical belief, that the Earth and the atmosphere were excellent conductors of electricity. They're not. In fact, we now know they're pretty terrible at it. The Earth is mostly an insulator. So is the air above us. That means Tesla's idea of transmitting electricity through the ground and pulling it back up on the other side? It was doomed from the start. But in 1901, this wasn't common knowledge. The structure went up before scientists fully understood atoms, let alone the behavior of electric fields at a molecular level. The theories Tesla relied on were incomplete. The materials he needed didn't exist, and neither did the precision equipment required to generate high-frequency currents efficiently. Some call it a failure. Others, like physicist Brian Field, are more generous. Tesla didn't know what he didn't know. He was working at the very edge of human understanding, building theories from intuition and flashes of insight. And that, perhaps more than anything, explains why he fell short. He was chasing the future, but the world hadn't caught up yet. Modern Wireless Breakthroughs More than a century after Tesla's tower stood silent, his dream is quietly coming to life, just not in the way he imagined. Engineers today are revisiting the principles he played with, and while we're still far from powering entire cities through the air, wireless power is real. You probably use it every day. Wireless phone chargers are a direct descendant of Tesla's vision. They work on the same basic principle, electromagnetic induction. A coil inside the charger creates a magnetic field, which then induces a current in a nearby device. The range is short, and it requires specific placement, but it works. It's safe, it's efficient, and it's practical. Three things Tesla's coil wasn't. Researchers are pushing this even further. Imagine electric vehicles that charge by simply parking over a special pad, or highway rest stops where cars recharge wirelessly as you eat lunch. Some experimental systems even try to charge moving vehicles while they drive, using buried coils embedded in the road. Others are exploring wireless power on a room-wide scale, using metal infrastructure hidden in the walls. The concept? Walk into a space, and your phone, smartwatch, or hearing aid charges automatically, no cables needed. The tools Tesla lacked, such as 
high-frequency inverters, advanced materials like ferrite, and fine-tuned control systems are now available. We're not trying to electrify the globe in one shot, but we are finding smart, scaled-down ways to bring Tesla's wireless dream to life. Bit by bit, the world is catching up to him, the wall of physics. Even with today's technology, we're still bound by the unchanging laws of physics. No matter how advanced our tools or materials, energy transfer through electric and magnetic fields still weakens rapidly with distance. Wireless power works best when devices are close and perfectly aligned. Scale it up and efficiency plummets. The energy loss doesn't disappear. It turns into heat and wasted potential. Innovative methods like microwave, laser, and ultrasound transmission are promising, particularly for low-power applications such as satellites or sensors. But for powering entire cities wirelessly? The numbers still don't support it. Tesla envisioned a world electrified through the air, a vast wireless network. What we have today is smaller in scope, but smarter in design. We're not defying physics. We're working within its rules, inching closer to a dream that once seemed impossible. Wardenclyffe's tower was scrapped in 1917, and Tesla died in obscurity, his vision unrealized. Yet today, his legacy powers our world including AC electricity, wireless communication, and even car brands. Though he never saw a wireless future, we now inch closer to it, still inspired by his dream, still wondering what's possible.